Hey, what's going on, Summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today I'll be walking you guys through this week's weekly news update. There's a lot of great things that have been recently announced, including some awesome new skins. Whether it's a hint at more Riot made games, item changes, crazy reworks, or even the smallest of changes overall, here at Pro Guides, we've got you covered. Be sure you subscribe and stay tuned until the end so you don't miss out on any important updates now and in the future. Nonetheless, let's hop right in. You guys already knew that we can't start a weekly news update without first covering the new skins. Starting us off strong, we've got 7 new skins being added to the Debonair skin line. These include Brand, Draven, LeBlanc, Leona, Malzahar, and Master Yi. Each of these skins feature a high class and well dressed champion in white and smoky green highlights. If this color scheme isn't your style, then don't worry. Each of these skins will be released with around 9 beautiful chromas for you to choose from. You can expect new models and textures, including new visual effects, new sound effects, and a new recall animation. With nearly all of them coming out as 1350 RP, you'll get a nice bang for your buck too. Alongside these debonair skins, each champion will get a matching icon so you can go ahead and further customize your profile. And if that wasn't enough for you, they're also introducing a few new emotes and a ward skin. Before we dive into more skins, don't forget to check us out at ProGuides.com. Here you can view our great catalog of challenging coaches that can run you through your personal dream rank. Got a busy schedule? Well, we've got you covered. Our trained roster of coaches are here 24-7 to help you reach your goal, whatever that may be. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and make sure you get that victorious Blitzcrank skin this season. That's already gone, right? Anyway, let's get back into the video and dive right into the rest of our PvE skins. Earlier, you may have noticed that we said nearly all when we were talking about the skins. This is because there are technically two exclusive skins that we haven't mentioned yet. Starting us off, we've got the Debonair Zed skin. This skin is a massive step up compared to the others and it truly shows. Not only does it carry a hefty price tag of 1820 RP, but it also features exclusive voiceover and animations on top of the usual visual effects, sound effects, and recall changes. Don't worry, it doesn't stop there. Like his fellow Debonair, Zed will also have 6 available chromas for you to choose from. Overall, it's a super cool skin that really captures the essence of the Debonair theme. Next up, we've got a pretty nice upgrade to Debonair Brand. Releasing with his normal skin, Brand will be receiving a Prestige Edition variant. This skin features the usual white suit, but instead of the green highlights, you have nice golden ones. On top of that, you can see the occasional glints of gold that sparkle around the champion. While we can't be certain how you'll get the skin, it's almost guaranteed that you'll need to get 100 prestige points and buy them from the shop. Overall, this skin looks super nice and really adds to the high class nature of Debonair. Before moving on, we got a new exciting feature that's been added to the PvE. The new challenges feature is finally here and will give us some insight on the future live version. For those of you guys who don't know, these challenges are meant to add yet another layer to your gameplay and customization. Each challenge will feature a unique rank up system that's similar to Eternals. The difference is that you'll be able to display these on your profile both in and out of the game. With this update, Riot is also looking to update the lobby and give it a fresh new feel. Overall, this feature is meant to give players additional personal identity. Now that the preseason has been out for a little bit, we can tell the community has quite a bit to say about it. For starters, there has been a ton of hate about the new objective bounty system. On release, players were seeing games with 10k gold leads quickly get lost. This was thanks to the enemy team simply capturing two objectives and gaining a massive gold bounty. While this was eventually hotfixed by Riot to provide less gold, it's still something that the community is uncertain about. It also seems that many players are split on how to feel about the current meta of the game. Thanks to the addition of Crown, many control mages are simply unkillable. Some players are happy that assassins can no longer rule the rift, but others are so angry that assassins are borderline unplayable. While speaking of unplayability, the support community is up in arms about the new Chemtech Dragon self. Not only does this self provide a ton of pressure and pick potential, but it also makes the support role borderline useless. If you're unaware, Chemtech Dragon's stealth can only reveal champions if they're spotted by another champion or through pink wards. This means that supports are often left warding obscure entrances in hope of providing useful information. On top of all of this, many complain that the soul doesn't thematically match what Chemtech is. The concept of Chemtech is poison and toxic fumes, not stealth. Overall, a lot of people aren't happy with the soul for one reason or another. It seems Riot has thankfully heard a few of the complaints about the preseason. As we previously mentioned, they were able to shift some of the power in objective bounties. On top of this, however, quite a few things are getting buffs and nerfs. Some of the key ones include Crown losing 10 AP, even Shroud having its damage increase reduced by 3%, Lethal Temple getting nerfed for melee but buffed for range, etc. These changes aim to ease the community's balance concerns and allow for additional feedback. Oh, and for all of you Caitlyn fans out there, Riot has heard you loud and clear. Her animation cancels are being reintroduced into the game and are being made easier so that all players can use them. It may not seem like much, but overall between the animation cancels and lethal tempo, she may sneak her way back to the top. Overall, Riot's fairly quick response to deal with overpowered things is improving in the preseason. Let's just hope that they can keep this up in the regular season as well. 
Now, as we dive into our pro guide tradition, we usually want to loop back to the preseason feedback. For our question of the day, we want to ask you, our wonderful viewers, what's your least favorite thing about the preseason so far? On top of that, what's your favorite? Mine's probably Ultimate Spellbook. I know that's not really part of the question, but I'm so glad this game mode is here because it's, it's honestly my favorite. We've got to start off strong by talking a little bit of Riot's TV show, Arcane. Over the past few months, Arcane is what everybody's been talking about. Tons of money and time went into advertising it, which really made people excited. Well, the League community seems to agree, and it has honestly paid off. Not only was Arcane a highly rated show, but it also built on the world of Piltover and Zon beautifully. There are a few complaints about the show, but overall, everyone is in agreement that it's a work of art. Its success speaks volumes for Riot and the animation industry as well. Arcane has laid the groundwork for Riot's future content, as well as the possibility that other games follow suit. Who knows, maybe we can finally get a League of Legends movie that explores all of Runeterra. Speaking of exploring Runeterra, Riot has released their Ruined King game. This is a turn-based role-playing game that explores the story of Viego the Ruined King. While it was supposed to be released prior to the Ruination event, unforeseen issues has caused it to be halted. The storyline was meant to provide a lot of context for the event and build up the world a little bit better. Sure, it's sad that we already know how the Ruination ends, but that doesn't mean the game is over with. There is still so much to explore and more to learn about. Well, some of us know how it ends, I just held down the spacebar and just collected my tokens. <laughs> That being said, it's finally available for purchase. It features some of your favorite champions including Braum, Pike, Misfortune, Alawi, Ari, and Yasuo. While it may not be for everybody, it's really nice to see that Riot is still expanding their game presence. Plus, quite a few people like the game so far, even if it's not the best by any means. Overall, if you're looking to dive deeper into the lore surrounding Diego and the Bruin Nation, this game may be for you. While we're still on topic of Riot games and their ever-expanding grip on the world, we've got three newly announced games to go over. Let's start with one that is still fairly deep in development called Project L. Project L is a currently untitled fighting game that looks to offer a similar style to Marvel vs. Capcom. Not only will this feature a few champions, but it seems that you'll be fighting in various places around Runeterra. So far in the release footage that we've seen, there are multiple abilities that champions can cast. While we're unsure of the passives, we wouldn't be too shocked if they were included as well. The current roster seems to consist of Ari, Echo, Darius, Katarina, and Jinx. It also seems that Garen and Lucian are hinted at, but they're not yet confirmed. Overall, it's very exciting to see a fighting game for League, as it's completely unexplored territory for Riot. Hopefully, everybody's favorite champion will be added at one point or another, and I'm wondering, what champion do you think would be amazing in this game? Honestly, I want to see Talon, but that's just a little bit biased. Next up, we've got the game called Convergence. While Convergence was announced in 2019, it has only been recently given a ton of additional information. Featuring Echo, it seems that you'll be playing on a 2D plane and using your time abilities to outwit enemies. It has been stated that Echo's rewinding effect will also be used during combat to undo massive damage. Convergence sounds like a ton of fun if you're interested in platformers and it's actually coming really soon. It's been announced that we'll be seeing Convergence during 2022. Keep your fingers crossed. Finally, we've got The Song of Nunu. This is an action-adventure game that is set in Frelord. Featuring Nunu and Willump, you'll be exploring these harsh conditions as you work towards your next puzzle. From the screenshots that we've been given, it looks extremely good. It combines a nice cartoonish ambiance with realism-inspired environments for an overall comfy feeling. It looks like something that you can spend hours on, especially if you love to explore every last detail. We haven't seen too much about this game outside of a few screenshots, but we've seen that Lissandra is featured in it as what we think would be a boss fight of some sort. Regardless, it sounds like we'll be getting a deeper view into Frelord and its chilling inhabitants. Just like Convergence, you can expect Song of Nunu to be released during 2022 on Steam. Before we continue on with the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. What are you waiting for? Join up! Regardless, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few topics. Before we close out the video, to make sure that you're all informed on your next solo queue match, let's quickly do a patch rundown. For our Trindamere and ADC mains, don't forget that Lethal Temple was reworked. It now works like Conqueror, and at max stacks, it now grants additional range. A few things to look out for are the new items Even Shroud and Crown of the Shattered Queen. Both of these are extremely cost effective for what they do, and if you're facing somebody who has Crown, be sure to pop the shield first before engaging. These two items, like we mentioned, are getting nerfed in the next patch, so make sure you use them while you can. Taking a look at a few of the key dragon changes, we've got Hextech Dragon and Chemtech Dragon. Both of these offer new stats for all of you and your allies to benefit from. The Hextech Soul will give you a static shiv-like effect that will slow down your enemies. As for the Chemtech Dragon, you and your allies will revive after death to fight once more for a limited time. Oh, and Cloud Drake Shards no longer give ultimate haste, instead they now give out of combat movement speed. Finally, the biggest change of all is to Scuttlecrab. 
With its experience in gold being significantly reduced, it has lost its value. Long gone are the days of losing your lane just so you can help your laner at scuttle. Now they can instead focus on ganking or getting vital resets in. And that sums up our video for today and thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video and don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.